Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu Ahlan wa sahlan or welcome to this channel, my, my YouTube channel guys Just came back from a talk, that's why I'm a bit late today I do apologize these days, I have got a lot of talks on Saturdays So uh, messes up the whole tertib, the normal schedule that we have So ahlan wa sahlan guys, welcome, welcome everybody I hope you guys are having a fantastic day, enjoying yourselves Right, so this is Saturday and as you guys know on Saturdays, I try to answer some of your questions So any type of questions that you guys have, inshallah, I'm going to try to answer them as best as I can um, Right, so let's crack on, hello my friend, you're welcome, my friend Free Palestine Thank you for teaching me Arabic, you're welcome, you're welcome Right, so I'm going to try to answer some questions that are on Curious Cat, get into it straight away Let's get into it straight away all right, let's see. Yeah, Allah. All right, let's see. Uh, wa alaikum assalam, Ibrahim Ahmed. Ahlan wa sahlan. Ahlan, my brother. And Abu Bakr, wa alaikum assalam, wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. Welcome, welcome. Okay, so let's check out some questions on Curious Cat. Would I be sinful if I don't wear niqab? If so, how about in certain workplaces where? Wassalam. No, you won't be sinful um, so long as you don't. Uh, so don't. So long as you don't um, wear attractive makeup. Okay, wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Ahlan wa sahlan. I feel really guilty for enjoying certain blessings in my life, like going out to eat in nice places and going on to holidays when our brothers and sisters and guys are suffering so much. I do whatever I can do in terms of donations, dua, and so on, but I still feel bad. Will I be held accountable for utilizing my money? Wa salam, inshallah. You won't be held uh, accountable. Uh, okay, next one Ibrahim, I'm having a daughter inshallah And would like to name her Maria Can you confirm the pronunciation of Maria? Yeah, so Maria Al-Qibdiya Maria Maria MashaAllah, may Allah make her Pious and blessed And comfort of your eyes if joining Salah late in Jama'ah when Imam is on second rakat, is this okay to join? Yes, it is okay to join. If you yawn during Salah, do you cover your mouth? Ideally, you should. Uh, okay, so this is sorry, yes, for which option? I can't remember what the question was. I recently purchased some sweets. They are made of none. Would they be okay to eat? Yes. Yes. Yes, okay to eat. Okay, khalas. Curious cat questions are all done. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. Wa alaikum as salam. Aisha, ahla wa sahlan. Welcome, Mu'eed. Walaikum as salam. What part of aura is a man allowed to see of another man and a woman allowed to see? So the only aura that a man can see from another man is anything below the knees, under the knees, and anything above the belly button. Right, so below the knees, above the belly button. And for a woman, it's the same. So a woman, for a woman, anything below the knees and anything above the belly button um, is allowed for, them, for the woman to see from another woman. But Anything between the knees and the belly button is not allowed. Please explain the simplest level of committing zina and how to avoid. So zina, the definition of zina is basically sexual intercourse. So if any kids are listening, just put your fingers in your ears, mute it. It's basically entering the penis into the vagina. That is the definition of fornication. Yeah, zina. Now the other things like kissing and touching, those are precursors. Those things are leaders. They are all sinful as well. Yeah, but the definition of zina for which a person can get the severe penalty for lashing or possibly even stone, 
then that, that is related to the act I just showed you. Um, Ameen, Ibrahim, Ameen, Jazakumullah Khair, Jazakumullah Khair, may Allah bless you. May Allah bless you. What do you guys think of the new vlogs? I'm just experimenting at the moment. I'm just seeing how, how you make them. So, uh, inshallah, I'll, I'll try to see. Because the, the main thing about making these vlogs is I want it to be something which, um, which is basically easy for me to not only make but also to edit as well. Because I've seen in the past where I've tried to make vlogs. Either making them is quite hard, thinking of ideas, or maybe the editing is quite hard. So if I can just make it very, very simple, and the aim of the vlogs is just that you guys have an idea of what I get up to behind the scenes. That's all it is. And I've seen this myself. A lot of people, they don't get to see like scholars um, in their normal environment, like, like not on the stage or not on the member uh, or not teaching. So don't get to see that. And I think it's very important for people to see because the, the people used to see the Prophet Sallallahu outside and how he was indoors. They used to see all of that. And it made them comfortable with him. They could relate to him. And the same thing, I think, you know, if you're a student and you you meet your teacher, but the only meeting of your teacher that takes place is in classroom. So you're basically only seeing your teacher when he's in class or she's in class. Then what can happen is you can have a false image of them. You can... You, you might see them as being like super pious or I don't know, that you can't relate to. You find it hard to relate to your teacher because you don't see anything besides what you see in class. So I think it's very important for the person to to um, to be able to be relatable, I think. What do you guys think? Do you guys, do you guys s agree with me on this point? Is it something which you would say, yeah, definitely. I think that's something that I would. Because I personally like to see a scholar behind the scenes as well. Yeah, when, when he's not on the stage or he's not giving talks. It kind of mellows things down as well. Uh, so yeah, I just came back from a talk today. And uh, I actually wanted to make a video in the talk, but it was a kid's gathering, a, a maktab system that's running in a place called Manara Foundation. I actually got a, a award as well for giving a talk. And mashallah, it was so nice. Little kids coming and reading the she's and then getting their awards for the entire year. You know, achievements that they've, they've, uh, they've had in the year. Uh, is it okay to pray a little early? Th is it okay to pray a little early, thirty minutes? Which prayer, my brother? Ayyub alaykum as salam, Sheikh. As a Hanafi, do you raise your hands in Qunut Nazila in Juma'a Salah or no? Qunut Nazila in Juma'a. No, Hanafis don't do Qunut Nazila in Juma'a. We do it in Fajr, Fajr Salat only. And do we have to say Amin Sanali? So according to Hanafis, we only do so Qunut Nazila is basically when you get up from Ruku, you say Allahu Akbar. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, that's Qunut Bitter. Qunut Nazila is you get up, Sami Allahu Liman Hamida. You don't raise your hands, you keep your hands on your side like this. And then you carry on. You do the dua. That's what it is. And do we have to say Ameen silent loudly? Silently is more preferred according to Hanafis. Is looking at non-mahrams with some attraction example of zina? No, it's not zina. If the attraction is, for example, when you have sexual desire, like you start to feel in your private area, sexual desire, that's when they say attraction. If you look at someone and you and you and you like the way they look, they like their features, they look nice, that's not technically considered to be uh, something that's necessarily sinful. As long as you don't keep divulging and have those you know, erotic thoughts. I think I'm confused about what fornication, please explain. So fornication is when a person, basically to be a bit blunt, kids are listening, kids put your fingers in your ears, parents yeah, block their ears. Fornication is basically, just to be very blunt and clear, is putting the penis inside the vagina. That's what it basically is. Yeah, Putting the penis inside the vagina of, of someone who is obviously impermissible to do, do, to do with. And everything else is a precursor to fornication. That doesn't come under fornication. Patrick, ahla wa sahla wa alaykum wa my brother. If a ma'adhur wears diaper during tawaf, will he have to change it whenever he feels a drop? No. So the ma'adhur is exempt because of that. So he won't have to. He won't have to change. He just has to, I would say, he just has to change it, like let's say once a day, regularly. So they don't become too soiled. 
Wa alaikum as salam. Ahla wa sahlan, Habibi Fresh Prince. Ahla wa sahlan. So I guess Turkish baths aren't recommended for men. So I've never been to a Turkish bath. But if there is exposure of the aura there, then they should be avoided totally. Best way to learn Urdu, inshallah. The best way to learn any language is just go into it. Try to listen to as much Urdu as you can. Like, for example, go on YouTube, find an Urdu speech or someone speaking Urdu, an interview or anything, which is very, very simple to, to, to listen to. And then keep listening to it again and again. And then when you listen to it, try to write down what you hear. Because learning a language, the main thing about learning a language is listening. You have to listen to something a lot right, to get it. Another good thing that I've actually heard is if you learn Urdu through Rosetta Stone. So you ever heard of Rosetta Stone? So a lot of people I've, I've spoken to, they've actually said Rosetta Stone is a very quick way of learning a language, like communication. So, so I would say try out Rosetta Stone and let me know what, what you find. Is a convert permitted to take part in a family wedding ceremony held in the church? My sister is inside the church. So as long as you don't, you don't take part in actively in the ceremony, as in saying things like that, but just observing it. So observation wouldn't be a problem. Right? So observation of it wouldn't be a problem. Did you manage to look into the ruling about when you start a prayer in one salat? Oh, yes. So this is, mashallah, some of you guys got back to me and you helped me out with this. So I still haven't kind of, I've spoken to Sheikh, Sheikh uh, I've actually contacted Sheikh, uh, uh, Sheikh uh, Tabrez and others, but I haven't got a response yet. I think they're probably busy. So what, I, what see, the, the issue is this, to, to put it in a nutshell, the Hanafis in Usul have a principle, which is the time for Salat from the beginning to the end is a prerequisite pre, pre condition. It's a condition for the Salat's validity. Meaning if you don't pray in that time, you pray before it, you pray after it, it won't be valid. That's basically what the, the issue that you have over here. Yeah? So, based upon that, technically, you should not be allowed. This is, this is what many Hanafis say. You should not be allowed to pray where part of the Salat is in the time and part is outside the time. So, if Zuhur starts at 12 and it finishes at 3, you can only pray Zuhur within 12 and 3. Yeah, you can't pray. And this seems to be the view among Zuhur as well. That you have to have the prayer inside. However, some of the later Hanafis, like Imam Ibn Humam, and his, his book Tahrir, and then a few others, his students as well, have said that if a person was to catch the takbir just before the salat, all they have to get inside the salat time basically is the takbir, Allahu Akbar. That's all they need. Okay, that's all they need. So he says that's the mashhur view. That's the that's the stronger view that's taken by later Hanafis. That's what I was not familiar with. So that seems to be now, I've kind of like, sort of like almost come to a conclusion. That seems to be the view that's held by many later Hanafis. Um, and that's it basically. That's, that's what, what, the, what I found. Sheikh, akhbarni an ahdafika li hadal am. Inshallah, ahdafi, my aims and objectives for this year, inshallah, 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 is to continue making my videos on a, on a daily basis. To um, produce some courses as well, some new courses, hopefully, um, and to try to develop the channel by bringing other people in. That's what I'm thinking about doing. Yeah, so I want to really kind of focus on on those. There's a few other things in my head, but I haven't really kind of uh, specifically made a specific objective of them. What are your ahdaf? Alaikum as salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Amma ahla wa sahlan. How have you been? Very well, my brother. How are you? What's a good mabadi for aqidah after tahawi in Arabic? So, one of the commentaries of aqidah tahawiya, that would be good to go into. Yeah, like, uh, for example, al, uh, al Ghaznawi's commentary, Maidani's commentary. Yeah, on aqidah tahawiya. That's a good thing to actually to read, try to read. Uh, you can also try to read the main things. The main thing in aqidah is, is I always tell people if you really want to perfect your aqidah, you need to study firaq. You need to study the various groups that emerged historically into a survey of them, the Mu'tazila, different types of Mu'tazila, how they influenced the society, and before them the Khawarij, and then you have the, the Karramiyas, and then you had the Jabariyas, and then you had the, uh, the Mujassima, and the, the, the Shia. So all these various groups, you need to understand them, because otherwise Aqidah is simply, you're just 
regurgitating what someone else has said when I haven't really absorbed what the discussion why did these discussions come from like what was the e- event that took place that these discussions came about like for example let's say for example in today's times something pops up with regards to i don't know evolution of of adam and it was adam evolved from another humanoid or did he come directly allah created him without any prior creation so what would the aqidah have to be like this is the reason for why this possible aqidah point could be raised i'm just saying so historically, why, why did the, the discussion with regards to whether the Qur'an is kalamullah or not, where did that come from? Who was the first person to start that? And who was the first person to discuss this issue with regards to the, you know, the, the, the direction of Allah? Is Allah in a particular direction or not? So I think that, that after Aqid we make sure you study that carefully. Start. Is it okay to keep eyes closed during Qiyam in Salah? I'm sometimes able to focus. Yeah, if you're if it's only for focus, like as in if you can't attain strong focus without it, then possibly yeah. it happens to me sometimes as well. Otherwise, no, it's considered to be disliked. There's no reason. Wa alaikum as salam. tayyib. Hope the exam preparation is going well. Asmal, is it permissible if medicine overpowers the mother's breast milk and to feed it to the child? So here is where there's an ikhtilaf between the scholars. Yeah, there's an ikhtilaf between the scholars. So some of the Hanafis are on the opinion that if medicine is more dominant, like Imam Hanifa's position, if medicine is more dominant over the medicine of the milk, then the, the milk is consider, the medicine is considered to be the primary source. So therefore, the milk will not attach, hurmat will not be attached to the milk. Others say no. They say that as long as there's a bit of milk in there, then it's still considered to be. Uh, so. Is it permissible? Yeah. Wa alaikum wasalam. Is it okay to cover the feet with a blanket when you sleep? One say ihram? No. Jazakumullah khair for your time answering our questions. A ma'adur wearing an adult diaper in the masjid. Does he have to change it every salah? No, he doesn't have to change every salah. No. Wa alaikum wasalam. Ahla wa sahlan. And you, you're two students, mashallah. Ahla wa sahlan. For khula, if the woman gives uh, khula with something haram, What's the ruling? Does the still give the item? What do you say, my bro? And you, I'm trying to think who is and you, and you, and you, and you, and you. So the ruling basically is is that if something haram has been given as as khula, then remember the the thing you give as khula has to be the same thing. It has to be the same type of thing that you give in mahr. Something which is halal, obviously. So something haram would not be permitted. Uh, and if the if the if the nikah, uh, yeah, so that thing is not allowed. So I read that the end of time for Isha is when Fajr starts. Please correct me. That's correct. If so, would it be technically permissible to wake up early and read before? Yes, but it's considered makru because the Prophet ﷺ wouldn't do that. The Prophet ﷺ told the people to pray in the early time. So technically it'll be done, but because you're going against the Prophet Sallallahu regular practice and his instructions. Salaamu Alaikum Assalam, Zub Ahla wa Sahlan. For the four months and ten days of Iddat for widow, is fam- if family is going to a wedding, can she be excused? No. No, she's not allowed. Oh, for, for, for death, yeah? Death, oh yes. For death she can. As long as she comes back at night time. Oh, I thought you meant divorced woman. Alaikum as salam, Allahu, ahla wa sahlan. How was your umrah? MashaAllah, umrah was very nice. Fantastic umrah, alhamdulillah. Probably my best umrah that, I, that I've had. Yeah, my best umrah probably that I've done. Very, very nice. Uh, how are you, my brother? Allah or Allahu? Is it Allahu? Allahu. Allahu means entertainment. The entertainment is a law. Who is Qadi Iyad? Qadi Iyad is a Maliki scholar in the 500s. He's a famous Maliki scholar in the 500s from Spain. And he's uh, he's done like quite a few works around the Maliki Madhab. Also, if I come to Jamaat and the Saf is full, should I pull someone back? If so, who? Ideally, you pull someone back. You just tap them on their shoulder and they should know that they need to step back. If you've tapped someone and they don't know, then carry on. Just just pray in your own self. 
Could you kindly explain, do not go near adultery? Is it truly a shameful deed and evil way? Yes. The Quran says, La taqrabu zina. Do not go near zina. Yeah, because, because zina is like a slippery slope. Once you step on zina, it's very difficult to avoid falling into it. Like, for example, attraction between a, a man and a woman texting each other. That's like the first steps you can say. Just like talking about things that are halal maybe, then later on talking about some things that are haram, and then flirting, and then it turns into exchanging haram pictures, and then it turns into haram relationships, and this and that and that. Right? It's something which actually can happen. Don't go anywhere near adultery because it is disgrace. One of the first part of the ayah, yes. So don't go near, Allah says. Yeah, so so it, don't go near. It's like saying, for example, don't go near that uh, well. So let's say there's a well. Don't go near that well. Does that make sense? So in other words, the well hasn't started yet. The well is still like you know, I don't know, ten meters ahead. But saying don't go near that well. FK, alaikum salam. Can you please give a quick demonstration of sajda sahu bas? Sajda sahu bas. And when we should do it? Would it matter if we just repeated the salah? If you're not sure, so I've actually made a video on this. You can check the video out on Sajda Sahu. Yeah, inshallah. So check my videos out. Sahu. Prostration. Yeah, so prostration of forgetfulness. Yeah, here it is. Sajda. Sahu one uh, so Sahu two Okay, so check this out inshallah you will find hopefully what you are looking for those are the two links inshallah i don't know if you can click on them or not uh but try that uh right Amr said, thoughts on Yaqeen Institute. I do not know too much about Yaqeen Institute to be able to give comments. I've read some articles and they're quite academic and well-written. I mean, I, I haven't really kind of looked at them to be able to say. I've heard many people praise them and some people say um, that they disagree with some of the articles that they've written. So this is why I wouldn't really be able to give. Otherwise, the people behind it seem to be genuine people. Yeah, most of the people behind it seem to be genuine people. I've met Sheikh Omar Suleiman. I've met Sheikh, um, a few of the others as well. Uh, alaikum as salam. Hanzala, ahla wa sahla. Dua for my exams, please. Inshallah, my brother. Just get your head down and start <laughs> revising Usul Hadith inside out. Also, is there any problem with prolonging tahajjud into Fajr time? And praying with her after Fajr time has started. Is there any problem with prolonging tahajjud? And t- so, yeah, so praying your with her after time, if you know the time is going to end, is not allowed. But if you didn't know and you accidentally prayed, then hopefully, inshallah, there's no sin. Wa alaikum as salam, M100. Hope you are well, alhamdulillah. What w- do we do when someone is revealing their aura in sujood? Should I close my eyes? Is my salah, he says, well, salah still valid. So I would just say, lower your gaze a bit. I know sometimes men, they wear t-shirts and they have, um, yeah, and you can see the backside sometimes. So I know it's not really a nice sight to look at. So lower, lower your gaze. Or close your eyes if you want. Also, what is the Hanafi way of clasping the hands in Qiyam? So in Qiyam, so basically there's two ways that have been reported. Hand on top of hand and holding the arm. Yeah, so holding the arm. Hand to hand. And some Hanafis have come out with trying to merge the two. So they, they do this kind of thing where they, they interlock their little finger and some. And then put three like that over their wrist. 
what is the best way to be less stubborn and kind towards parents? Make loads of dua to Allah, to Allah and, and give your parents gifts. Buy regularly your parents gifts, hug them, make dua for them. Yeah, that's honestly, that's the, probably the best way. Zakhallah khair, ahdafi ahsan tukallam wa qiraat al arabiyat tasawuf li kun shu'urun an la marak. MashaAllah, jameel jiddan. MashaAllah, jameel jiddan. Wa alaykum wa sallam. Don't you think it's too depressing to remain inside for four months in the UK for women in Iddat? Yeah, so according to Hanafis, the woman is allowed to go out if, she, if her husband has passed away, uh, but she has to be back by. So she can go for work. She can go, you know, she has to go shopping. Um, but she has to stay in that residence. If a woman is obviously suffering from depression and things like that, you know, obviously the scholars will look into that, definitely. What is the benefit of visiting the graves of the pious ulama? It reminds you of the akhirah. Yeah, so visiting pious graves, it reminds you of the akhirah, inshallah. Is it okay to pray with pictures in front of oneself or having TV in the room? So it's considered makru to pray Hanafi say where they are surrounded by pictures. So if you can, go into another room. Otherwise, if you can't, then just carry on praying. Kazma Taz wa alaykum as salam. FK Jazakallah khair maaz. What if I want to learn reading Quran but I'm 16 or can I? Of course you can, my brother. Of course. I've got a series on learning how to read the Quran. Can you make du'as at the graves of pious? Some people say. So according to the scholars, there's two opinions. Some say no. And majority say yes, you can. Yeah, majority say yes, you can, and, and and that's fine. Some say you shouldn't raise your hands. Some say you should face the qibla. Yeah, but otherwise, majority position is that you can make du'a at graves. Can you guarantee that going through your course only you can learn Arabic perfectly? Uh, it depends what Arabic you want. So if you want comprehension Arabic, then I would say possibly it's very very high chance you can achieve that. But if you want spoken Arabic, then no. Spoken Arabic needs a physical person to speak to. Aisha, what are some of the first benefits experienced from regular reading or listening to Quran and some of the best benefits? I don't know. You tell me. I can tell you my own personal ones. I mean, I've benefited from listening. I feel calm, relaxed. I remember Allah. It sometimes makes my heart emotional. Yeah, and I can understand Arabic, so this is why I, this is my own experience. I don't know anybody else got their own experiences. Start on the topic of evolution, as it was mentioned. Is it categorically impermissible to believe Adam and Hawa were metaphors, uh, allegories? Uh, must one affirm their direct creation by Allah? Yes. They must believe that they were physical entities. If they do not believe this, then they will be considered to be deviant. They will not be considered necessarily out of the fall of Islam, but they'll be considered to be deviant. No. So, you know, Adam alayhi salam was an individual how was did Allah create him we don't know the details of that does Imam Ali kill 20 men in Badr I have no idea is there barakah at the graves of the pious people so scholars say that the graves of the pious are considered to be blessed places and uh, as in what does barakah mean does it mean if you sit there you automatically get, get like a wireless charge in your iman Allah Allah knows best uh, so if the saf is full, do I tap someone from the middle of the saf? What if they're not in Qiyam? Yes. I think I answered that earlier. Is it proper to pray silently? Is it proper to pray? And what do you mean by silently? How? Explain please, Azim. What if I want to learn reading Quran but I'm 16 years old? Yes, you can. Does Imam Ali kill? Best way to ask a wife to wear a headscarf? I don't know. Maybe just like speak to her. Maybe tell her the virtues. The thing is, look, anything in Islam, it goes back to Allah. The more someone has love for Allah and the love for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the more they would start practicing Islam. The less love they have for Allah, the less love they have for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the less inclination they're going to have for wanting to practice the religion. Uh, five pillars, mashallah, five pillars. Jazakallah khair. Guys, this is uh, five pillars. Uh, amazing content journalists, mashallah. Check out their... YouTube channel, check out their content, inshallah. Brother Dili, mashallah, doing a lot of good, a lot of good work. And I, I personally think, it's, especially in the UK, we need more Muslim active in politics, in journalism, honest journalism, yeah, investigative journalism. So, you know, if you guys can support Five Pillars, 
uh, honestly, try to support them as best as you can. Because um, seriously, when it comes to try, trying to deal with challenges like we now have with Gaza, the only people that can really make some sort of a, an impact is people like uh, Five Pillars, Cage, these organizations that are, you can almost say like, not only are they grassroots organizations, but they are making the Muslims aware of what's happening as well, professionally. So, yeah, Five Pillars. Thank you very much. May Allah bless you. Oh yeah, guys, if you guys have not seen, I did a podcast with Brother Khasu. So check that out. Brother Khasu is a Russian originally. Uh, he he uh, is a Muslim. He is in Jordan at the moment and he runs a YouTube channel called Learn Arabic with, with, with Khasu. And mashallah, he does a lot of very good videos. Like, honestly, this is without exaggeration, without me trying to big him up or anything. Like, I, I really got inspired by some of his videos to actually copy some of the videos that he does. They're so good. Good content. When I say good, I mean the video is good, the sound is good, the way that he teaches is like wholesome. It's not like you know fluffy, woofy kind of teaching. It's like to the point, and he teaches in Arabic. So honestly, and he he, he does some English ones as well. But check him out. Check him out, inshallah. Uh, does Imam Ali kill? I don't know, my brother. I love Amir Haq. I'm sorry, I don't know the answer to that. Also, best present for dad. Whatever your dad likes. If your dad likes a mug, get him a mug. If your dad likes some new pair of socks, get him some socks. If your dad likes a Ferrari and you can afford it. Wa alaikum as salam, Yusuf Adam was silent. How long after a woman divorces her husband will the child be from the lineage of the husband? Is this like a test, my brother? Azmal Ali. Is this like a, a Hidayah test? So the Hanafis basically say that six months. Now, what they basically say is that if a person dies, Either they gave their wife talaq raj'i or they gave their wife talaq bain. And if it's a talaq raj'i, then the child you look at, if it's up to two years, the child's born. Yeah, then after that, we assume that they might have done ruju. And if it's, if it's bain, then up to two years, the child will be attributed to the, to the, the late father. And otherwise, after that, uh, then it will not be attributed to the father. Is the report of Ali Radhan lifting the 900 kilo the door fasting when fasting? I've heard isn't. I don't know. Allah Allah. Does Imam Ali. Brother Hamil Haq, I think I'm going to have to block Hamil Haq. I think he's uh, he's outstayed his Imarat. Okay, so unfortunately, Brother Amir, you keep asking the same question. So unfortunately, I have to block you. Okay, uh, I if I have a massive butterfly on a shirt but no eyes can be seen, is it permissible? Possibly. To treat diabetes, patients may require insulin. It's used to replace insulin in the body. It's not producing. Is the same extracted, purified from... It is sometimes extracted purified from pigs. Is it okay? I don't know. I'll have to look into that one. So generally, the rule of the thumb is this. The rule of thumb is this. If there is a medicine which is taken from haram sources, if there is another medicine available that's at the same potency and strength, from can be made from halal sources, then you're not allowed to use the haram one. And you're only allowed to use the one that's made from haram sources if there's no solid alternative. Hal to tabi fari kurat al qadam laysa bil muwadaba. La ahtam bihi kathiran. Alaykum as salam, SC1 ahlam wa sahlan. I accidentally sat in third rakat of Asr and said only atta and got up. Does it normally require says how? Yes, because you delayed, you basically created a delay between the sajda and between the qiyam. So you delayed the fard. So if you delay the fard uh, a significant amount, so you sat down, you said atta here, so that would be considered a sufficient, sufficient delay. So you'd have to do sajda sahu. Was it, it the sitting part or the reading? So basically the Hanafis say if you delay a fard from its place So you have one fard is sajda, one fard is qiyam If you put something in between, if you delay it Then you have to do sajda sah. Anything we should know before going into marriage just, just try to be a good person That's it Try to be a good person Try to you know fulfill the rights of marriage That's it I don't know, anyone else got any good tips for Yusuf? Lately, you start, I find myself constantly questioning the intention behind everything that I do. Am I doing things for the sake of Allah alone? Is it 
incorrect to have multiple intention behind a particular action what are correct intention is there a video essay so in i don't have a video for this but in short good intention is basically anything that you do which ultimately is going to please allah so imagine for example like the lady who went into the well and took off her shoe and filled the filled the well water in her shoe and then fed it to the dog so imagine this this case being something which is um pleasing to allah isn't it right Pleasing to Allah. Whether she whether she did it with a good intention or not, we don't know. But because ultimately it's pleasing to Allah, we would say that's sufficient. Yeah. Or the guy who's walking down the street and he sees a branch and he says, you know what? Maybe someone's going to trip over this. He, he wasn't thinking about Allah, but he just didn't want other people to be hurt by this. And the Prophet said, Allah forgave him, entered him in jannah, entered him in jannah. So you imagine it's all about ultimate. Is it pleasing to Allah or not? Anything you do in life, is it pleasing to Allah? Best questions to ask. A prospective wife, I don't know. Anybody? So the thing is, look, when people say best, what I would suggest is there's a website. I remember once someone put it up. I think it's called Pure Matrimony. Pure Matrimony. If you go on that website, they've actually got 100 questions uh, that you can select and ask the other person. Now remember, look, if you have to know what questions to ask, it means you don't know what you want in a wife. Imagine you want to buy a car. Yeah, imagine you want to buy a car. Right? And you know about cars. You don't need to ask people, oh, what question should I ask the seller? What question? If you know about cars, you know exactly what, what, what are you looking for in a car? Are you, are, you, are you looking for a fast car? Are you looking for a diesel or a petrol? Are you looking for automatic? Are you looking for a comfortable ride? Are you looking for soft seats? Are you looking for digital dashboard? What are you looking for? That's the kind of question you need to ask. And likewise, if you're getting married, what are you looking for? Are you looking for someone attractive? Are you looking for someone with a certain skin tone? Are you looking for someone with certain hair color? Are you looking for someone certain height? Are you looking for someone who knows how to cook? Are you looking for someone who is interested in some hobbies that you have? That's what you need to ask. Honestly, that is what you need to ask. Just think about it. A lot of people do when they ask me these questions about what questions to ask. I'm thinking, yeah, like, oh, what's happening, bro? Well, you want to get? You want me to marry her? Ustad, is there strict criteria as what makes someone a Muslim, what does not, what takes them out of the fold, just because you mentioned that not believing in direct faith. So the strict ruling is this. Anything that will bring you into Islam, as, as in anything that you need to enter into Islam, denying that will take you out of Islam. That's like the easy rule of the thumb. Right? So that's why they call it Iman Mujmal. The Iman Mujmal. Right? So if someone says, I denied... The, the oneness of Allah Because the oneness of Allah brings you into Islam You have to believe Allah is one to become a Muslim You have to believe that Allah you know, Is the ultimate creator Is the you know, all the, all, Everything that's attributed to him You have to believe in the day of judgment You have to believe in Jannah Jahannam you have to, Those are the things that bring you into Islam And those are the things that will take you out of Islam By denying them That's a simple Otherwise Otherwise, um, if you're very confused, what I would suggest is, again, contact Sapiens Institute, speak to them. If you're really having these thoughts, you need to speak to someone about it. Sapiens Institute are the, probably the most trained institute that you have. Have you heard of Sheikh Asim Al-Hakim from Saudi? Uh, yes, I've heard of him. Wa alaikum as Can you enter paradise if you don't pray Salat? If Allah allows you to enter, no one can stop you. Inshallah. Ibrahim Abdullah alaykum as What is Hanafi stance on seeking refuge in Allah and spitting three times to the left? Is this done in Salat? Hanafi say they should not be done in the Fard Salat. And if it is done in the dry, in the in the in the in the Nafal Salat, then there is scope for it. Yeah, so long as it's not done too much. Ahlan uh, wa sahlan. You didn't answer. What if they are not in Qiyam? i.e. how do I tap someone to come back if they're not, if they're in such that, then you just carry on, then you just sit down in that row on your own. Other than reciting Rabbana, Hablana, Dua, what other things, and it's, by the way, it's not Habl, the Ha, okay, it's Hab, Habl means like pregnancy, okay. Uh, what other things can one do from Sunnah when seeking marriage, but finding it being quite a struggle? To other question, may Allah make it easy for you for, for FK. May Allah find them a spouse, someone who is suited for them. What I would suggest is, besides making dua, you need to actively go looking. Honestly, actively go looking. 
People are shy to go looking, but you have to actively go. If your parents are not interested in finding for you, you need to speak to someone who can find someone for you. Right? Don't be afraid. Right? It's like, for example, you know, if you're scared of going to find a job, you're never going to find a job. If you're scared of learning how to drive a car, you're never going to learn how to drive a car. You need to take the first step. Try to speak to someone. If you're shy, speak to a friend or someone. Say, look, please, can you, and this is my age. Write down like, you know, like a CV of, of yourself, your name, your age, what you've achieved, what your ambitions are, what kind of person are you, maybe a picture as well, and then give it to people and say, look, if you find someone, can you pass it on to them? Uh, strange, I only saw the one message from Amir Haq. Uh, if a burp smells like a fart, must you make wudu? But, mashallah. The killer one, bro. That means like half in Tarawi, half the guys, their wudu's gone. If someone prays Asr and Maghrib time enters, while in Salah, is there a minimum number of rakats they must reach? The Hanafis say they must at least say Allahu Akbar Takbir. The Pantel Khazu was indeed amazing. Best crossover on YouTube. Alhamdulillah. Khair. MashaAllah. You know, I was actually thinking afterwards, ah, oh, you know, I forgot to say this. I forgot to say that. I was on the receiving end of being on a podcast. And I realized what it feels like to be on the receiving end of a podcast. Yeah, normally I'm interviewing people. Ustad, were you able to find out about last year's questions? Some asked making one record. Yes, I explained it a bit early on. Yeah, someone did ask early on. I did explain it. So you might need to just rewind a bit. Uh, Al Habib, alaykum as salam. Can you share with us your mutala routine? So it depends. It depends, my brother, uh, of what book I'm doing mutala of. Yeah. Uh, so are you asking at what times I do mutala? Are you asking about how I do the mutala? If you can elaborate, then I can be a bit more specific. What to do if I start thinking about showing off my good actions? Shall I make a better effort to correct my intentions at the start? So why would I say, look, if I put, don't do anything. Do, every single day, do one action that's good, like two rakats of salat at the hundred time or something, some charity that nobody knows about. Start with that. Once you start with one action, it slowly is contagious, it spreads in other things, and then you like to conceal your actions. Yeah, that would be possibly the best way. Start with that, inshallah. And like all actions that you must do, there's no showing off in them. So your five times salat, there is no showing off in five times salat. So you can tell people I prayed my five times salat. That's totally fine. And sometimes it's even good like giving sadaqah as well openly to encourage other people to give sadaqah as well. I have another Salah question. If I'm in second sitting of third or fourth rakat, uh, if I read anything beyond tashahud within that sitting, would it require yes? So the Hanafis have various opinions on this, but the Ibn Abidin says the stronger position is that if you say Allahumma salli ala Muhammad, you say that much, then you have to do sajda sahwa at the end. Yes, or, or, or also actively looking, trying my camel, Tying my camel, but still proving to be a struggle. Yeah, good. Inshallah, don't worry. You'll have, you know, honestly, the number of people, men and women, who have contacted me, who have said they've been looking and they've found. Some of them may have taken a couple of years. Some of them in the next few weeks. Honestly, they, they found, and I'm surprised. Mashallah, so quick. Yeah, it's gonna happen. Inshallah, you just have to do do a bit of sabr. Carry on. Keep searching. Actively searching. Asking people. Spreading the the word, and then Inshallah. And, and and the other thing is, try not to have too much expectations in a spouse. That's sometimes what puts people off. Too much expectation. Because sometimes you're looking and say, oh, but she doesn't have this in her, or he doesn't have this in him. right? It's like someone was saying to me, they, they, this, this lady is 23 years old. She was saying, she, her, her mom was saying, she um, what a spouse for her that's got a house. And I was saying, who living in the UK, 23 years old, Possibly just come out of university, can afford a house. You can't. That's not something which is the norm. So again, you know, it's it's not something which is easy. Uh, and Islam, alaikum assalam. A family member's car broke down, and I've been requested to take them to the shop so they could buy vape fluid. Is this permissible? Yes. Start. So I understand that we shouldn't seek Islamic knowledge for fame, praise, etc. However, can one aspire to be the best in other areas, such as? Best in career, of course. You should, why not? You should be best in, 
yeah, in, 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 in uh, your salat, in your hajj, in endeavors, in your projects, you're setting up a madrasa, the best madrasa set up, have the best maktab system, have the best. It's good because on the Quran, Allah tells us, وَجْعَلْنَا الْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامٍ Oh Allah, make us imams for the muttaqin, make us leaders for the people of taqwa. So you're asking Allah to make you a leader in that particular field because if you become a leader of them, that means people are going to be inspired by you and then you get their reward as well. But yeah, good. Generally, in, in, in other things, you know, you should want that. I, Tahawiyah bias towards Maturidi, or is it general for all, all Muslims? Yeah, Tahawiyah, because Tahawiyah actually came before Imam Abu Mansur Maturidi, 100 years before, you can say. No, not 100 years, sorry. Uh, it came before. Uh, so it's based upon the Aqidah of Imam Abu Hanifa, of Yusuf Muhammad, like Imam Tahawi says in the beginning of his book. And it's accepted by everyone. Everyone accepts it. I meant mutala timings. Oh, mutala timings. So my mutala timings, I usually do mutala late at night. So when I come back from work, about 10-ish, 10.30, I do a mutala at that time. Um, and sometimes in the mornings after Fajr. And sometimes I'll do it in my breaks, when I have any breaks at work. And sometimes, yeah, so sometimes I do it at 5 or 6 o'clock. So it all depends upon, I, I try to look for times that I have available. That's how I do mutala. And then it depends, obviously, some mutala I can do in the car, some mutala I can do at, you know, just at home, some mutala I have to do in, in maybe like a sp- specific place. I don't know, what do you do? What's your what's your timings of mutala? So what is permissible to ask a prospective spouse before marriage, i.e. intimacy-related previous partners, private sins? So these kind of things, I would say you should avoid them. Because they're not necessarily going to impact the marriage. Yeah, sins and these kind of things, unless it's something which is like a STD, then those kind of things, then you obviously should should inquire or at least get some reassurance that there's not STDs or illnesses like that. Otherwise, past sins, a person should not divulge them. And you should not ask people for their past sins. Unless it's going to be a past sin that obviously is going to, like for example, let's say someone was addicted to drugs in the past. That might be something potentially harmful. Uh, uh, Rishad, Hakim, alaikum as salam, ahlan wa sahlan, ahlan wa sahlan. Uh, is pondering upon death daily encourage Islam? Yes. Death in the sense that we all have to go one day. The way people slowly are dying around us. Yeah, all these kind of things. Wa alaikum as salam, Rayhan, ahlan wa sahlan, Rayhan. Ustad, does a masbuk only recite at tahiyyat? In the final sitting behind the imam, then stay silent. Yes, ideally that's what he just does. Ustad, sometimes I hide the fact that I'm studying Islam further than whether it's Quran, Nafal Islamic classes. Am I okay for hiding these as I worry it may compromise? Yes, you can hide them, but it wouldn't be if you were to tell people, no problem at all. Because by telling them what it does, it makes them intrigued about Islam. You're encouraging them basically, you're inspiring them. TM Alaikum Assalam. Can one make the intention for Allah and to be known as a brave person when carrying out Islamic military services? If the, if being known brave is so that it inspires other people, then why not? Yeah, that's fine. Otherwise, no. Lowering your expectations shouldn't re- relate to deen. That's the main issue I'm finding. To be honest, worldly possessions is something secondary. And yes, which 23 year old have that? Yeah. And again, even in religious issues, sometimes, for example, uh, I've seen this where sometimes a guy will say he only wants a woman that uh, that you know doesn't want to, doesn't work in any place, or um, like you know maybe she's uh, wears niqab and this and that. And sometimes it's very difficult for a guy to find a girl like that, or maybe the other way around as well. So sometimes what you have to remember is when you get married, you're not going to stay frozen. In that same state all the way until you die You're going to evolve spiritually There's a lot of spiritual evolution that takes place in marriages There's so many, if you look at your parents Many people's parents before And then when they get old They slowly start to, you know The, the body starts to calm down, slow down And then they start to get more More spiritual, you can see that Start reading Quran more, attending the mosque more They're getting involved more in, in These kind of things So I would say people should remember in the past, when people used to get married, it wasn't like all these little details they were looking for. 
it was usually families used to find someone and say, look, we found this person. We think she looks good. We think she she's a good girl. We think this guy's a good guy. Right, let's get together. That's how it was in the past. But when I mean expectation, I think people become too nitty gritty. They're like checking every little thing as though, you know, if I marry a guy who prays the Hajjud, this guy's going to be the perfect husband. No, maybe not. Maybe the guy who's actually prays the Hajjud might be a guy who's going to make your life difficult. Yeah, honestly. Maybe you're looking for a guy who's a scholar. And maybe you later on realize getting married to a scholar is the worst thing ever because he hardly is at home. He's always going for bayans. He's always, people are always contacting him. He's always, you know, uh, he's always having to uh, serve the community, and and unfortunately, this is this is what happens. So a lot of times, a lot of people kind of have a bit of a shock when they marry scholars or someone who's an activist. That was seen. It's a bit difficult for them. Uh, my my timings currently are after Fajr, before work. After work between three to four thirty, then after class, excellent. Sounds like my thirty. <laughs> Sounds like my thirty, bro. You're welcome, Aisha. If one makes closing salams and moves arms a bit and say istighfar after salat, but then suddenly remember they were due to make salat, is it still permit possible? Yes, they can carry on making, because that will not render them out of salat. Technically, uh, what renders them out of salat is to start speaking to someone or if they ch- move their chest away from the qibla. Uh, wa alaikum as salam, ahla wa sahlan, Rona, ahla wa sahlan. Thank you, Ustad, regarding the marriage question. Yep, I was referring to things such as current addictive behaviors, drugs, consuming illicit. Yeah, those kind of things I think you should find out. Have they been prisoned before? Those kind of things which sometimes have an addictive knock on effect. Sheikh, what is the wisdom behind being able to marry four wives and how does one serve justice to all? Um, so. The, one of the wisdoms, there's many wisdoms, you have to remember this, Islam is a religion that is designed for not only the UK in the 2024, but it's also designed for the desert as well. It's also designed for the tribe that live in the desert in tents. It's designed for everyone. So what you have to remember is your society is not the ultimate model for how humans live around the world. And generally how humans live around the world is, is that women are vulnerable, they're weak. Women require support, strength. And that support and strength obviously comes from the gender, which is stronger, and that's the males. And then some, in the community, usually you have more women than you have men. And that's because maybe men will die in battle. And maybe women will get divorced or other things. So these women out there, they shouldn't be left on their own. They should, they should, be, they should have husbands. So one husband can marry two women or three women or four women like that. Arbaz Khan, wa alaikum as my brother Arbaz, what's happening bro? I miss you man, I miss you. What do you think is the best way to counter ideologies like feminism? Do you think these ideologies are linked to atheists? Definitely, 100%. Remember this, any ideology that goes against what the teachings of Islam teaches, the values of Islam, is ultimately going to support batil. Is ultimately going to go towards this ultimate frame, this umbrella of battle, including atheism, including shirk and all that. Yeah, so what I would suggest is what is the best way to counter this? Sapiens Institute. Honestly, I keep saying Sapiens Institute because they're doing a fantastic job. Yeah, so Sapiens Institute, check them out. They've actually got many videos on feminism and, and, and countering it. Main thing is character and all things you mentioned is true. Yeah, so character is hard. A thing about character is very hard to be able to find out a person's character. The only way I can say you find out is if you ask other people about them. You have to ask people who know them very well. And try to find people who are older than them. And ask them, say, what do you think about her? What do you think about him? Be honest. Tell me the honest truth about. What is hypocrisy? What is hypocrisy of faith? And what the other types of hypocrisy... Okay, so hypocrisy is basically of hypocrisy of faith is where a person does not really believe in Allah. They hate Allah. They hate the Prophet Yeah, and that is but they show that they're Muslims, like Abdullah ibn Ubay ibn Salul. Yeah, like him. Hypocrisy in character. So I think maybe you know this answer to this. Maybe this is like one of those questions to test me. Uh, what is the other type of hypocrisy? 
If I wake up 20 minutes before sunrise, is the Fajr Salat valid and there's no sin? Yes, it's valid. Would you ever consider taking CVs and matching people up? Perhaps just a thought. I did actually think about this in the past. If there are people who do want, then maybe I can voluntarily do something. I'll see. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I don't know if there are some people out there. Some people have contacted me and they've actually sent me their CVs. Uh, if there's anyone that you know, women have sent me, men have sent me. Um, but the thing is, again, it's, it's that I, I can't do magic. Yeah, the magic is really going to happen when the two people are going to meet each other, families are going to meet, etc. But yeah, possibly. Allah, Muslim men and women sitting together but not free mixing, is that permissible? Like on the bus, you mean? Do you mean like on the bus? Yeah, if it's like on the bus, then it's fine. Add on to the Saho question, what if someone says to the istighfar after salah and then crosses their legs? Is the Saho still possible? Yes, still possible. But they've happened to general situations. Yeah, it's fine. As long as you haven't moved your chest away from the Qibla or you haven't spoken to someone. If sunrise is any time between 7.47 and 8.06 and I read Fajr Salah at 7.50, is my... So find out if the sun has risen. If the sun has risen, then your Salah is not valid. And if it hasn't risen, then your Salah is valid. Miss Yodanofti, hopefully coming to us so far soon, inshallah. Would you personally think interracial marriages or would you... Recommend marriages within cultures. Again, it all depends on the person. Good question. There are some people who don't realize it, but they they should only get married to their own culture. Yeah, and and and, and I'll give you like a sign of someone, a person who is not accustomed, who hasn't lived with other cultures. If you haven't lived with other cultures intimately, then it's best for you to just stick in your own culture. So, like, let's say there's a Pakistani person. And predominantly, they've only lived amongst Pakistanis. They only know the Pakistani culture, or maybe even within Pakistani culture specific. Then it's best for them to try not to experiment outside your culture because you might find that you're not accustomed to how they do things. And if you are familiar with various races in your community, you've lived amongst them, you know roughly how they function, you know how they think, you know their their habits, right? Then it's fine. Why not? No problem at all. That's what I would say. The balanced way. Is there a sunnah on the number of children a couple should have? No. I hear in culture, if a per bring, can bring children, they should try and bring a lot. The general rule is this, bring children, but make sure the children's tarbiyah is not affected by the number of children you have. So if let's say someone has 15 children, and the children, they can't be taken care of, parents are here and there, and some of the children are like running outside the house, and, and some of them get, you know, Unfortunately, get into bad company. Why didn't you start Arabic language lectures? You mean spoken ones? I have many Arabic language lectures, my brother. For a guy, is it frowned upon in Islam for those who can't provide shelter, finance, and marriage? Examples, university students that are still studying full-time, can they get married? They can get married, but they need to ask their wives if their wives are wi willing to forfeit that right temporarily. So let's say, for example, I'm getting married to a woman. And I go up to her and I say to her, look, you know, I can't afford a house. I live with my parents or I'm in university. You know, you want to get married. And then she goes, speaks to her family. You speak to your family and you guys all agree. And she's OK with you living in university or at university or living in your parents. That's OK. Then. Yeah, that's fine. What about marrying those from like different maslak madhab? No problem at all. Why? What's what's? Remember the the whole thing. Madhabs is not something which is an identifying identifying who you are. It's just a way for you to facilitate you worshiping Allah. And madhabs all bring you back to Allah. So it doesn't matter what madhab it is. It's totally fine. That gives a lot of clarity. You're welcome. Can women wear perfume at home during the time when non-mahams may visit? As long as it's only a little bit of perfume. It's n so if uh, so, if the non-mahams are going to come, you don't want them to sort of clearly notice your perfume. Like at wedding functions, non segregation can men. I wouldn't see a problem with that. Yeah, I know some people would disagree with me on that, but the point is that if there's men and there's women, and you're sitting with your family, you're sitting with your family, or you're sitting away, and there's no Partition in between the women's side and men's side. Just use common sense. Don't look on their side. Don't keep kind of 
peeking on oh, is there anyone interesting there no obviously don't do that one you know the first look is okay and you're doing your first look thing no don't do any of that my brother just like how would you kind of behave in a professional saying at work Shay, i know you speak multiple languages could you say something long in pashto zu nan tali wama yo bayan da para bayan me warko o bia bayan na pas na waqt ashlama no the day wajina the podcast the the live stream lag na waqt shuru shuna o koshish me dao che pau kam las shuru kama mufti sahab can you start doing book reviews videos i have come across some you earlier ones yeah I, the thing with us is timing isn't it I didn't see that as prioritized. That's, that was the thing. So because my time, I'm very restricted to what I can do because of the times. I have to choose very, very carefully exactly what I'm going to focus on, what video I'm going to make. Otherwise, you know, I would love to make various types of videos if I had time. Yeah, I would love to make various types of videos. Why is music haram when it allows people to task more easily? So... Why is wine haram when wine can relax a person and make them more comfortable speaking to other people and become more confident? Yeah. So, so a person might see something as haram, but then think to themselves, but what, what about this positive thing about it? And that's why the Quran says about wine and gambling that there's benefit in there, but there's also harm. And the harm out, out, outweighs the, the benefits. So that's what you have to look for. Even though music might allow a person to do a task or exercise or things like that, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's, it's, it's good for you. Does that make sense? So when the harms outweigh the goods, then you stay away from it. How many languages do you speak? I have four languages. Four. And then there's some other languages, but I don't speak them fully. I can understand other, a bit of some others, but I don't speak them fully. fully. Mufti, how are you finding making the vlogs? Um, at the moment, it's just experimental. So I'm a bit kind of like, you know, like in that crazy kid stage where he gets a new toy and he's kind of like really excited about it. So I'm in that state phase at the moment. So I don't know what you guys think. Of, what do you guys think of the vlog? Be honest with me, because this is the stage where I want you guys to give me feedback so I can improve them. Yeah, I can. The thing is, in my mind, I'm thinking that my intention of making the vlogs is I just want to show you behind the scenes what kind of person I am what I do behind the scenes so that you guys become more comfortable with me you guys can relate to me more and then it kind of makes me feel like a normal person to you guys yeah that's my intention and I personally think this is a good thing someone might say oh scholars should not be doing these kind of things you should have this like super respect for scholars and you know you shouldn't try to delve into their life too much otherwise your respect for them will go down I don't I don't believe in that because I've I've sat with my teachers and I know I know what they're like behind the scenes and it makes me feel so much more respect for them and love for them uh, that it's like a family member it's like a family member that you have this special love for that's what I personally have with my teachers so this is why I know a lot of people you guys only see me on the screen you guys only see me in talks or here or there so I think it's very difficult for you guys to 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 kind of like uh, patch together what I'm really like. Yeah, but then when you get to know me in this way, ideally, obviously, each one of you should know me privately. But obviously, that's not possible. That's, that's, that's too difficult that is, for many reasons. So this way, obviously, gives you an insight. That's my intention. I don't know. What do you guys think? How, you, mashallah, you look like a lion. Allah, the lion of the jungle. Simba. Uh, some Akida books recommendations. So Akida Tahawiyah. Okay, the Tahawi is very good. Al Fikul Akbar is good. Make them longer. You want them longer? The only thing is, is if I make them longer, I'm trying to keep them within five minutes. If I make them longer, I don't know. I mean, I think people might think, ah, you know what, this is getting a bit boring now. I don't know. What do you guys? Maybe I'll do like a poll or something on Telegram. See what people say. You're saying, Hassan saying, make them longer. Check. Is it a superstition that people say there's a jinn with you when walking in the dark? No, I've never heard that before. So, what? okay, Hassan, what aspect of it do you think you would like to see more in the vlogs? What aspect would you like to see more? A priori, is car sharing allowed renting a car for a short period of time? Uh, and what about leasing of a car? Yes, as long as the 
the person who is car, car sharing you mean as in two people share share the ride and they pay half and half is that what you're saying car sharing what about leasing of a car so leasing is allowed as well ijara so i'm actually doing this in guduri at the moment Naisha, why may laziness and boredom cause sinning and how to be less i don't know you know good question why would laziness and boredom cause sinning i don't know well did anyone know the answer to that and how to be less lazy the, there's no cure for laziness the thing about laziness is really what it is is that a person does not really have focus on something when you don't have a focus on something then you become lazy yeah like let's say a weekend comes and you don't know what you're going to do on your weekend you have no aim and objective on your weekend what most likely is going to happen on the weekend is you're going to end up just sitting there on the sofa watching tv or going through social media and that's it so what you want is you want to have a goal so every weekend comes on a piece of paper write down i've got to do let's say for example 10 tasks write them down and you might not get to do all of them but it will give you focus for your weekend uh, next some people say that whistling attracts the shaitan is it true i have not come across anything about that i don't know if anyone knows anything please let me know oh yeah someone last week asked about dua for clothing isn't it? i actually looked it up there there is actually a dua for clothing taking clothing off generally they say just say bismillah and the other one is bismillah la ilaha illa hu yeah um Salamu, of you speaking one to one with the camera. Ah, oh, one to one, you like that kind of one to one, yeah. Does it make you feel as I'm speaking to you? Salam, restream or streamyard? I I use restream. I haven't used streamyard, so I wouldn't really be able to say I use restream. Arsal, what do you use Zoom party? Arsalan, alaikum salam, ahla wa sahla, my brother. In these days, how can we pursue serious studies of the deen but also make a living so we can be? I would say, look. What you need to do is just focus on one aspect of learning. So, first of all, just focus on learning Arabic. Yeah, maybe it's once a week, maybe it's a twice a week, whatever you can dedicate. But do it consistently. That's what Allah loves. Allah loves consistent actions. Do it consistently. And honestly, I've seen many people who have learned a lot just by doing small little things, but consistently. So do that, I would say, inshallah. And you're earning on the side as well. And make lots of dua to Allah. Remember, Rabbi Zidni Ilma. This is a dua. Oh Allah, increase me in knowledge. Yeah, give me deep understanding of knowledge. <clears throat> uh, I think you missed this. How does one respond to the opposite gender who asks to have study sessions? Just tell them that you find it uncomfortable. Recommend me some videos of scholars to improve Arabic language. What I would suggest is go to YouTube and type in Sheikh Adham Asimi. Adham Asimi. Or you can type in anything you like. Type in uh, Kasu. Learning Arabic with Kasu. Or Khasu. K H A S O. Zakallah Khair Aisha. Ibi Mufti. I ask. This before, but you were muted in the last Saturday stream. Is Imam Abu Hanifa always muftabihi? No. Can we not take Sahih Bain's or other opinions? If you're an expert and you know how to navigate between the opinions, then yes. But that is basically requires studying, specializing in ifta, the khasus, basically. That's where you learn all this. I use both for my program and talk show and game show. Mashallah, love your show. Zakallah khair, Zoom party. May Allah bless you. My brother, and for barakah in your time and your efforts. Thank you very much for your for your kind feedback. I like Restream. Restream for me is very, very... I used to use before uh, Streamlabs. And it was a bit kind of technical, so you had to do a lot of things beforehand. And then if something small gets messed up, and then it, this is like seamless. This is very nice. And the problem with the Streamlabs was you, the system had to be very fast to be able to um, stream at a very high speed. So Streamlabs is more versatile, definitely, without a doubt. If you are good at using Streamlabs, definitely, I would say, go for it. But if you're just like lazy like me, just use Restream or, or, uh, or, or what's it? The other alternatives out there. 
Are you aware of an opinions of women traveling without mahram to see close home? Yes. Yes. As long as the journey is safe and the chance of them being molested, of being harmed, is extremely low, like next to zero. Shahid Rafiu alaykum as salam. You run any Arabic courses? Yeah, so I've got a course called Quranic Arabic 17 Lessons. 50 pounds for the course. 50 UK pounds for the course. 17 lessons. It gets you into the the, the, the precursor, the introduction of how to learn Arabic language and gets you to translate Quran as well. Uh, why did you cut your hair? I went for Umrah. So I did Umrah and then I, I shaved my head over there. So if you're on my Telegram, then you can get all my updated notifications or if you check the, the social media streams. Memba'ul Hilm, wa alaykum as salam, ahlan wa sahlan, welcome, my Turkish friend. Um, actually, uh, as you guys have noticed, have you guys seen, I've actually started putting subtitles on videos now. So I can put now Turkish subtitles, Russian subtitles. So I've been trying to see who benefits from them. Today, I actually uploaded one of the old podcast, Arabic podcasts. I uploaded it with subtitles. So I found a way, which is basically I have to take the video off, then put it back up again. And then it identifies the, the language and then I can put subtitles. So are you guys are you guys enjoying that? Do you guys think I should do uh, more of them? Yeah. Do you guys like be honest? Do you guys benefit from the the captions subtitles, or is it something that you know doesn't really bother you? Uh, okay. The other thing is this. Yeah. If you have Google, you have a laptop. You can actually have when the sound comes out on there on the Google. Actually, you can have sub. I didn't know this. You can have subtitles on the Google as well. Right, so you can actually you go to Google settings, and in there, there's advanced settings for subtitles, and it actually bring up on your screen whatever you're watching on Google. So let's say you're watching this, uh, or on YouTube even, and it comes it comes on the Google uh, browser, then it, it automatically on your screen puts subtitles. The YouTube one is more accurate, I would say, definitely. Uh... Shukran, Jazeel, and you're welcome. Uh, was there any curious comments? Yes, there was. I answered them earlier. There's some a few here now, or two here now. Do you know of any weekend Alimiya courses? Um, weekend ones online, you mean? I don't know, you know. I don't know if there's any weekend. There might be. You're going to have to find out. But I don't know any, I don't know any reliable one. Reliable one. Uh, so far, does in the weekdays. Do you know that? For a guy, is it frowned upon in Islam for you, for those who can't provide shelter? In that one? Abu Bakr, if praying alone, are we allowed to recite loud in prayer as helps focus as I'm aware Hanafi Madhav says, read silently. If you're alone, you can write, yeah, you can read loud. Ideally, read quietly. Rona, oh, shall I please keep me in your dua. Uh, keep me, I mean, I've been Umrah, so... Next time, inshallah, I'll go. What about the whole different Isha opinions? I look, I took the Sahibain's opinion when 18 degrees didn't occur. Okay. Uh, so Sahibain don't, don't have the 18 degrees opinion. It's Abu Hanifa, rahimahullah, you're talking about. Yeah, Abu Hanifa's issue in regards to the, the whiteness disappearing. Wa alaikum as Abu Bakr. Do you have kids' story books you could recommend into series reading while reading and translating? I found some online, but they're not helpful as they don't have harakat. Yeah, so what you do is there's a website called Tajura. Tajura.co.uk. Yeah, Tajura. Check them out. They've got a variety of series. Should one recite another su? Okay, uh, Al Balagh has weakened one, I believe. Should one recite another surah in the third and four, fourth rakat for extra sawab? No. In fard, do you mean fard talat? And no. Keep the vlogs coming of this sahab. What, what specifically thing do you look forward to in the in the vlogs? Like what kind of things that you you like watching in there? So I know at least what kind of things to put in. Any specific du'as for repaying debt? Yeah, so go to Google, type in du'a for debt, and one will come. I've actually covered one in my series on du'as. If you go into my series on du'as, there's actually one I've actually gone through there. 
Okay, so remember, if there's like a, an answer which you guys can easily get from Google, I'll just tell you to get it from Google. Yeah, and actually my Dua series, I've got a Dua series yeah, in there. Check check it out, inshallah. Uh, where's my Dua? I haven't made any Dua's videos in a while. Uh, but if you check that out, inshallah, you'll find uh, short clips. Where are they? There's the Dua series. Mashallah, today the place that I went to give a talk was a, was, a, was a kids' madrasa and it's run by scholars from Bangladesh who have majority of them have studied in Azhar University. Mashallah, very nice scholars, very good work they're doing there. Arabic obviously is very nice, they speak Arabic and I really benefited actually to, to contact details with some of them. And uh, Alhamdulillah, Mashallah, speaking to one of them and he's actually doing a PhD on. Uh, Arabic education in the West for non non Arabic speakers, so that would be very good to read. Inshallah, when it comes out. Uh, okay, regarding taking other opinions within the Mazhai Sahib and others, can we take the opinion if it's easier for us or if it's not flexible to choose? So again, so the, the issue over here is the scholars Hanafi say basically that switching opinions. If it's done out of laziness, out of a person simply deliberately trying to follow their own whims and desires or trying to find the most easiest thing to do, then this is, this is something that is frowned upon. But if a person does it because they find the other opinion very hard to act upon in their situation, then I don't see a problem in that. But again, you should always consult a scholar. Never ever try to take any opinion unless you serve. Even if you're a student of knowledge, always speak to your teacher, say, look, is it okay if I take this? I know muftis who will contact other muftis and say, look, what do you think about me taking this opinion? It's just out of taqwa. Right? You don't want the deen of Allah to become something messed around with. So ask a scholar, if you have it, look, uh, I, uh, is it okay for me to follow because of my situation? Is it okay for me to follow Sahibain's view or, or Muhammad's view? I would, like, I would look forward to shots of you teaching, etc. Maybe put the camera in the back of the class. Mm, okay, all right, that's a good one. Can we keep reciting the same ayah in salah or is it sinful? Yes, you can. I like seeing your day-to-day -day preparation for classes and vids. All right. Does a sufa have a library do a tour? Yeah, they've got a small library. They're building it up. Okay. Is ambient sound permissible? It's like an echo sound with no lyrics. Possibly, depending what it is. Blogging profound moments from your classes with your students' interactions. Uh, see, the problem with that is I would have to record the whole lesson. <laughs> which is not really feasible um, But yeah, I can see what you're saying Because yeah, like, all of a sudden I can't come up with something profound And quickly put my camera on So that's why that, that might be a bit I understand what you're saying, definitely Why is getting from Google good? I used to do that and there's much dismissive information online Especially if one doesn't know any library website So generally the du'as Du'as usually have like some reference with it yeah, so getting from Google is not impermissible. Like if someone says, oh, where can I find this hadith? So generally on Google, you've got Sahih Bukhari translated, Tirmidhi translated, Muslim translated. A lot of these things, if someone says, where can I find a virtue of reading Surah Yasin? Yeah, you can, you can Google these things. Do you think it's worth investing? And then if you find something, check it out with a scholar. Say to a scholar, I found this, is okay. That I would say that would actually much better than you going asking a scholar. Because what that's going to do is going to create inside of you this talab, a desire to seek knowledge. Do you think it's worth investing in physical copies of the children's books for someone who likes physical? Me, only concern, my only concern is needed over time and storing gear. So I would say it depends on the person. I, I'm okay with PDFs. But... I've also got physical copies as well. So physical copies sometimes is good because you simply just have to open it and you don't get distracted with anything else. With sisters and brothers attending wedding functions, etc., how is it possible for men to lower their gaze? Wouldn't it be better if scholars give the ruling of strict segregation? Yeah, you can. That's, what, that's fine. That's what scholars generally do. But if you went to a wedding, let's say, not everyone is going to listen to scholars, are they? 
I've been to many weddings and I know many scholars have been to weddings where there is no segregation in between. So this is this is why you know the scholars should encourage segregation. But you're asking the question, is it permissible for them to sit on you? You're asking for you. So you can't just invent like a sin. You can't say it's sinful for men to sit on the bus with women. Building on this question, should scholars do nikahs that have fisk like music? No. If there's open music, free mixing, what do you mean by free mixing? Like, do you mean men and women hugging each other? If that's taking place, that's totally wrong. Scholars should not attend that. You're, we're talking about where men and women sit in a big hall, separate from each other, like on the bus, like at work, yeah, something like that. So that, that is not technically free mixing. Yeah, people who say that is free mixing, they need to they need to bring evidence to show that's free mixing and be consistent in it as well. Then they have to say traveling on a bus where you're sitting next to another man, where you're sitting on the same areas as other men or women. Does that make sense? Is it true that if one but I'm what I'm, what I'm not saying, I'm not encouraging this. I'm not saying to people before someone makes a clip of this and starts sharing around saying, look what he's saying. He's saying men and women should be sitting in each other's laps in weddings and scholars should be going there and Singing with them as well. No, I never say anything like that. What you guys need to understand is you need to be consistent. If you're saying you need segregation when it, okay, good. Definitely, that's encouraged. Scholars should encourage it. Yeah, without a doubt. Mentioning their bands. But you need to be consistent in everything else in life as well then. Uh... Is it true that if one hasn't done Sunnah Salah in this life, that the Prophet would not intercede? Some narrations seem to be indicating towards something like that. We can't 100% say, but there's narrations that indicate towards some sort of, of that. Uh, I thought you were referring to rulings of hadith is good online, yeah. Since Adhan is Sunnah, if one misses a prayer and they pray in a jama'ah, is Adhan also Sunnah there? Yes. So the Hanafis generally say, in Usul, they say the same way that Ada should be performed, Qadha should also be performed. So when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he missed s several Salats in some of the battles, he would make up the Salat with the Adhan as well. Have you considered doing podcast now? You have reached the audience 100k. The only thing is, I don't have time. Honestly, I do not have time. Like really, I'm struggling with time. I have so many things going on, like juggling so many things at the same time. I actually want to ask you guys a question. Does anyone know of a very good app, even if it's something I have to pay for, where it helps me organize all my WhatsApp messages, Telegram messages, and emails, and everything, so I can have it in a place where the ones that are unanswered are in like one, one tab, so I can easily look at them. See, this, at the moment, what happens is when people send me messages, WhatsApp messages, ask questions, and things like that, I have to prioritize people. Right, so certain individuals, I mean, close family members, they're giving priority, and then maybe like <coughs> students, scholars, and then other people after that. Because it's, it's very difficult for me. I get like 10 to 15 questions a day people ask, and I can't answer them all. So what I'll do is I'll just dedicate a specific time, maybe after a few days, and I try to answer all of them all in one go. And sometimes with the voice notes as well, it just makes it easy for me. But if I could have some sort of an app that arranges it for me and even reminds me, you haven't answered this person, you haven't answered this person, I think that would be very, very good for me. Yeah, so if I could have something like that, um, you know, I really, if someone can help me out, guys, and tell me if you guys know of any apps. Uh, so this is why I would love to do podcasts, but unfortunately, I'm just tied for time, really. Do you attend a wedding where music is playing? No, I avoid that. Do you ask the person who invited you before you attend? No, because I usually know who. Like, if they invite me, usually they... They they don't do have these things. Yeah, I've been to one or two where they've had them, and I've been invited to to give a nikah. So then, obviously, last minute when I find out it's there, I can't just walk out because the whole nikah won't be done. I imagine scholars have to ensure they attend functions. So generally, scholars, if 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 you know a scholar, you know that you're not going to invite him to a place where there's these kind of things going on. I've seen like some maqra of hadith gatherings that give ijazah after them, open to all, not just hadith students. What's the purpose of this? It's barakah, purely barakah. It has no bearing besides that. It has no value besides that. Jazakallah khair, Aisha. You're welcome. You're welcome. Wa alaykum as-salam. Member ul-hilm. 
Okay, so this is translation time, trying to translate now. Give me a second, guys. I'm just gonna... I may not be there for a long time due to some reasons. Take care of yourself. I'm so happy to know you. May God keep people like you in our lives here. Okay. Okay, right. Check this out and see if I All right. Ah, uh, that's good for such What about even if a hole is segregated, the man and women mix take pictures of the groom? No, I would say that's wrong. I would say they should avoid that kind of thing. Franz is a good app that has everything in one place. Franz, yeah, okay, I'll check that one out. Franz. Friends, yeah. All right, it sounds good. Yeah, I'll check that out. If a person asks Allah for the first level of paradise because he feels that it's more realistic and attainable, is that a bad mindset? No, no problem. There was a Sahabi who said to the Prophet, I want to I want uh, to do farming in Jannah. I want to do farming. So the Prophet says, Okay, Allah will allow you to do that. So if, if that's your aim, that's fine. When will the Muftis issue fatwa to do health insurance as the NHS is getting tougher? Yeah, I was thinking about that the other day as well. It's getting very difficult now. Uh, and that's unfortunately what the Conservative government has done. The Conservative government has just messed up the whole NHS system. and So I don't know. It's a good question. Though. I really think scholars in the next few years will have to start thinking about that. Because now in the UK, NHS trying to get an appointment. I've like there's certain things I've been trying to get appointments for. Sometimes they still haven't got back to me, or they'll phone me and it's like, how do I know they're phoning me? I'll be in Salat or something and I miss their call and that's it. They won't phone me back, or they won't even leave a message to say phone this number. And unfortunately, this is sad reality now. So sometimes like I'll have some sort of an issue, and I will basically just like just forget going to the doctors. I'll just do some uh, my own. Ho Herbal remedies. What do you guys? What, what do you guys do? Uh, there is a quote of a Tabi'i say something like, "I wish I am the first after the fire, purely out of being humble." Okay. Wa alaikum assalam. Is drop shipping halal? So drop shipping all depends on drop shipping. Yeah. So drop shipping. There's various different models for drop shipping. The idea is is basically drop shipping is Let's say I sell things that I don't own. Islamically, selling something you do not own is not allowed. Yeah, because you don't have it. And you're, you're promising someone something, but you don't have it. Therefore, the guarantee of being able to give it to them is not there. Now, if you become an agent on their behalf, so if you make the business such that you're becoming an agent on their behalf, so they want you to buy something for them, and then you, you take a fee for that, then that's different. So it's like you're like a kind of a work on their behalf. and You get paid. Um, that would be permissible. Uh, or if you were a, 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 an agent, a wakil on behalf of the company that you buy stuff from, you make an agreement with them, that's possibly allowed as well. So that's what I'm saying. There's various scenarios. Potentially, it can be allowed if you work it as salam, use it as salam, use a salam contract for it. Why is your tea blue? So this is actually called blue tea. It's called blue PT. Blue PT. This is type of leaves. Yeah, let me just try to show you guys because I'm a nice guy. So, see this. So I hide my face. This is it. 
blue PT is actually little leaves, petals. Actually, I didn't go on Instagram today, did I? Instagram people are probably going to be sad. Uh, is it recommended to have a very large beard that's longer than a fist? Actually, Hanafi say it's actually considered disliked to have a beard that goes beyond a fist. Many of the Hanafi say it's actually disliked for it to go beyond a fist. So my beard is, is just, just about fist. As you can see. And obviously, the white hairs are appearing. Can you see? No white hairs. Have you ever been put into a situation where you've had to privately pay for a healthcare situation? Yes. Yeah, I've had to. Several times. I've had to. It's just, unfortunately, the NHS just mess you around and they just like kind of cause so much problems. Not that, I didn't have to pay that much. It was just, just a few hundred. Salam, ahla wa sahla, Usman. Do you teach at Darul Uloom? I teach at a Sufa Institute. Are your students predominantly Indo-Pak or from all other words? Predominantly Indo-Pak. I benefit greatly from your videos and would like to thank you. Jazakumullah khair, Usman. May Allah bless you. And Allah barakah in your efforts, in your time, in your knowledge. Rona, share. I have I heard some about some about it's a sunnah to drink coffee or tea or something like that. I've never heard of it. Okay, guys, I'm gonna finish it there. I didn't realize the time. It's quarter past twelve. I realize the time. You guys didn't even realize the time. Okay, so Mufti, do you think scholars should also go to university and study other professions? A hundred percent, definitely. If you're living in the West, you need to understand. The society, the culture, and I would definitely agree with that. It seems like the past scholars were masters in many fields, not just some sense of this. Don't seem to 100% agree with that. I would definitely have to agree. Whoever wrote that, mashallah, well done to you. I think it's very important because a lot of people, scholars, unfortunately, are just limited to their understanding of what they've been exposed to. When you go, when you go out and you talk to people and different times, you begin to appreciate what these people, people go through. Is it sunnah to eat halwa? Halwa depends what you mean. Do you mean like, is it something the Prophet, did the Prophet Sassan eat a sweet dish? Of course, of course, some a sweet dish. Yeah. But if you mean, is it rewarding? Then no, there's no specific reward attached to it. All right, guys, I'm going to finish it there. Jazakumullah khair. Thank you very much for watching this live stream. May Allah bless you, keep you happy. And inshallah, stay tuned for more uh vlogs hopefully inshallah i'll make some more i just gotta like, think about when to make them what kind of images to take or videos to take and then is for me i think the thing is it's like i've got to act natural and it's hard to just put the camera on act natural straight away i i, I haven't reached that level where i can just act natural like that so i don't know i'll see i'll see how i'll see how it works inshallah Maybe the more I do, maybe people will, over time, start to get used to my... That's another thing. And you, you, Whenever you're going to do something, always let other people get used to you. Don't always try to make your sound. Don't always try to put on something just to kind of appease other people. That's, that's, that's what I've learned. Always just be yourself. Obviously, don't be rude. Don't be vulgar. Be yourself. And let people get used to you. And then after a while, once people get used to you, that's what they expect. They don't expect anything more. If you already put yourself in a higher soul like mode, higher mode. And always like this. Yeah. Then you're gonna always need to have this super pious mode. Yeah, well, the students, if they want to be on camera, it would be good. Make a light heart. Yeah, maybe that might be good. Sheikh, is true that <laughs> that rumor is a hundred percent rumor. Hundred percent, I agree with that. All right, guys, take care. Have a nice uh, week. Talk to you guys next week, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Make dua for my students as well, guys. Make dua for my students. Exams and revision as well. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.